we don't live in a clockwork universe. And I think many people outside of physics believe that physics is all about understanding the machine, that the universe is a machine with laws and what happens is inevitable. Um, now, that model of, model of physics was disproven in uh, the early 20th century. We know physics doesn't work, as a, the world doesn't work as a machine. It's a quantum world, and that's a very abstract, uh, it, it, that's a very abstract statement. And we're struggling to understand what it really means. We have been ever since the 20, 1920s. But we know that, that uh, concepts like the square root of minus one, which is the I, uh, in fact, that's the real third I, um, the I, which I talk about in the book, uh, not the iPhone or the iPad either, the, the, the real I is the square root of minus one, and that's at the heart of quantum theory, and somehow that is fundamental to reality, um, and we're struggling to figure out how. But what we do know from quantum theory is that what you, um, what, what you get in the result of an experiment depends on what you decide to look at. Uh, we're not just bystanders. What, when we make an observation, the results, we have the freedom to make, to choose what to measure, and what we get depends on what we measure. Um, and people, this is at the forefront of quantum information theory uh, right now, to understand exactly what this mean and, means, and some people are worrying about, does it mean there's free will in quantum theory? And could we make a theory of free will? And uh, so these are frontier topics which haven't been resolved at all. But I think everything, quantum, quantum theory clearly tells us that we are an integral part of uh, determining the evolution of the universe. And um, we're not, as I say, we're not just bystanders.